Let's get down to it. What is Wetiko? I think that's where our journey really kicks off here today. In a nutshell, it's a Native American term that connotes in a way the spirit of evil. And, um, and you could say it's a psycho-spiritual disease of the soul that afflicts humanity. And it exists in a way, we could say, in the collective unconscious of our species. And that's to say that we all potentially have it in, in potential. But I'm pointing out in my work, you see, as a Westerner, as a modern Westerner, I'm actually translating this indigenous term, which is completely mind-blowingly profound. It, it's, you know, it's like a higher dimensional idea. And I'm just translating it into a modern psychological idiom because it's it's what's it's what's at it's what's at the bottom of the collective madness that's playing out in the world today, and um, and it works through the the blind spots of our psyche. It's a form of blindness, but it's a peculiar form of blindness that actually thinks it's sighted. And not only does it think it's sighted, it, it thinks it's more sighted than people who actually see. So in a way, because it operates through the projective tendencies of the mind, what it does, it entrances us via our own projections, you know, such that we become conditioned and we react to our projections in a way where we create in a, this cocoon around us, which suffocates us. It's like, I want to say, yeah, this is the diagnosis from what our species is suffering from, that Watiko, it, it's the source of all the myriad world crises that we're facing. And the solution is to be found within Watiko, because Watiko is to be found within the psyche, within us. And it can only operate and have power over us to the extent we don't see it. Because remember, it operates through the blind spots. That's why my whole work is trying to help people to see it, because when you see it, you take away its power over you and you empower yourself. You see, it has no creative power at all, but it's a master impersonator. So it actually impersonates us. It offers us this fictitious identity, this limited identity. Oh, I'm wounded, I'm traumatized, I'm limited in a certain way. And now keep in mind, it has no power over us at all when we're in our true nature. So that's why it impersonates us, it offers us this fake identity. As soon as we identify with its version of ourselves, then it has us, because then it can manipulate us, then it can control us. And if you think about what I've just described, there are three facets of that. One is we give ourselves away. Second, we identify with who we're not. And third is we, we disconnect from our intrinsic creative power. That's a recipe for madness, and that's what you go.